we're back and we are doing a, an antibody identification panel. Usually we get a 10 cell panel, but we've got a 16 cell panel. So this is going to be totally crazy because I'm going to have to use two serifuges to do this um, all quickly. So I'm going to try to make this not very um, long of a video because the explanations for a lot of this stuff you can find in the antibody screen video. Uh, if you look here, this is our patient, and we have a positive antibody screen only in the one cell, and we can look at the anagram um, later. And so we're going to do this now to see if we can identify that antibody. Notice we did not need to do a positive, or sorry, a DAT, a direct antiglobulin test, because the patient did not have an autoantibody. Um, so we don't need to worry about trying to identify a um, antibody or if there's complement coding the patient's own cells. Uh, all the other ones up here, the other line cells one, two, and three are reagent cells, okay? So just to give you a heads up with that. So we have 16 tubes and one auto control. Always make sure you put that auto control out there. Okay, so I want to resuspend my three to five cellular suspension. I will be putting one drop of cells, um, whether the reagent or auto control cells, into the tubes appropriately. So this is the auto control, so we're going to get one there. All right, now we're going to put the reagent cells in. This panel is huge. This is going to be great. Okay, so I like to rock them when they're still in the um, container here. So you can rock them this way gently. That way you do them all at once and they're all ready for you. Okay, and you'll know when they're all ready for you when there aren't any cells that are stuck to the bottom of the glass bottle. Okay, so when you do this, you also still bring them up resuspend them a little bit just in case they were sitting since we have so many cells. <laughs> I still can't get over that. That was just one. Okay, so I'll do a couple more and then I'll finish up off camera because this is, this is going to be crazy. I hope you're going to have as much fun as I am. <laughs> All right. Okay, good stuff. So let's do two more. So I did the auto control first, so I didn't forget. And you can do that if you want as well. Okay, one. And then that was cell three only. Woo! And now we'll do cell four. All right, so I'll come back when I'm done with the rest of them and we'll get moving. All right, so I put um, reagent cells into all of the tubes. And so now is time to add the two drops of the patient plasma, okay? One, two, one, two. And I'm going to add it off video. All right, so I added patient plasma to all 17 tubes. This is wild. All right, so we're going to now shake them a little bit, very gently, and put them into the serifuge. And again, we're gonna have to use two serifuges because of how many tubes we have. Okay. All right, so that's one, and I'll load the other one to off camera. So I wanna make sure to specify and make sure you all know what we're doing here. So each one of these uh, cells from a donor is, um, these are all O donors, okay? Just like in the screen, and each one of these vials pertains to 
one line across one row so if you look at the donor information here you see the r z r1 that's telling you what's in the rh grouping here okay and that uh, type of annotation you can uh, we'll learn in class on how to read that. And then next to it is the serial number of that donor. All right, so now let's pull out all of these, all of these tubes. Okay, so one started way over here at 12. Okay. Oh, that wasn't one, that was six. Okay, one here. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Making sure I'm not messing up these numbers because there's so many ways we could mess this up now since we have so many. Okay, and 12. And my other serifuge went off too. So I'll get that out in a minute. So let's do a couple of these. So immediate spin for the first two are negative. Put that back that we know that those are that way. Negative. Since there are so many uh, lines, I'm going to be writing down the reactions as we go. Okay, so these next two look negative as well. Again, this is all immediate spin. So most likely IgMs will be showing up here. Oh, we have a positive. Woo! All right, this one looks negative. Okay, so six is negative and five. What would you say that is? Well, that looks like a, a three. Okay, so five is a three plus. Six is a negative. Seven, ooh, seven is positive too. Okay, so we're gonna say that's a three plus as well. Eight's a negative. Plus a negative nine and ten. Oh, ooh, we're having some positives here. Okay, so ten is negative. I think, yeah, ten is negative, and nine is another. Th sorry, it's another three plus. Some big agglutinates in there. So three plus. The negative, all right, 11 and 12. Those are looking negative too. I'm trying to do them over top of a white background as well to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Because remember back in the screen, there were some um, kind of uh, weak reactions so 11 and 12 are negative. Let me go get the other ones. Okay, so I'm back with the other ones. These ones are negative two. That's 13, 14, 15, 16 are negative. And the auto control is negative two. Okay, so we have all negatives there. All right, so if you look, so far we have three positives. We have cell five, seven, and nine. Hey, look at that, all prime numbers, woohoo. Okay, so if we were to have a highlighter, I could highlight those lines so far to see who it is that we might actually have in regard to an antibody. So you can freeze this frame and see if you can figure out what it is before we continue on. Um, so the next part, um, 
that I'm going to do is add the two drops of Liss. Again, Liss is, ugh, I just smudged it, I'm so sorry. Um, Liss is known as the low ionic strength solution. That's why it's L-I-S-S. -S. Okay, so low ionic strength solution. Okay, so we're going to do two, two drops of this in each tube so that we can get rid of the ionic cloud that hangs around the reagent red cells due to the addition of um, saline in the patient I'm sorry we, we wouldn't have added saline in the patient I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time I'm giving out false facts um, the saline may be in the reagent cells okay so when the reagent cells were made into a three to five solution they added saline as well okay so that's where the ionic cloud would come from in the auto control the ionic cloud would come from saline that's in your patient red cell suspension okay so now we're going to kind of shake these out a little bit and then we're putting them in to the uh, incubator. Still getting excited that we're seeing positives here. I mean, I added it, but it's still exciting. <laughs> okay. And remember to check your manual thermometer to make sure that you really are at 37. Um, in another video that I did before, you want to um, know to turn, hit the start button, because if you don't hit the start button, it'll say 37, but your manual thermometer will not say 37 because it's not actually heating. Okay, so we have all 17 tubes in there. This is just wild. And we're going to incubate them for 30 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna set that timer. So when you add this, you don't need to extend the um, time out to be 30 minutes. Uh, but again, since we don't always use fresh reagents, I like to make the incubation period longer so that we definitely get all that might be there. All right, um, check out the rest of what happened in the next video, part two, <laughs> and I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching.